Test again. Uh, this will be the showman. This okay. Let's just have an informal bow. Check it. Okay, have a seat. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about. Uh, uh, Tony, can you keep an eye on that? Uh, we're going to focus a little bit on Taekwondo, so this is going to be kind of a little preview of what the fall get together is going to be mostly about. And first and foremost, I want to just uh, talk about a brief history of Taekwondo. So I, I don't want this to be a one-way street, so perhaps maybe one of you more avid Taekwondo practitioners can tell me what the definition of Taekwondo is. I mean, you don't have to stand, just keep it informed. Yeah, it's just message. Uh -huh. You? I mean, that's, that's the translation of it. Uh -huh. yeah. How about you, Fred and Tony? Yeah. Fred, you, 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 you did study Taekwondo mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what came to mind. That's what came to mind. <laughs> well, here's the deal. The term Tae, when you look at the Chinese character for Tae, it doesn't necessarily mean foot. It means to stop doing this. And that came to be associated with foot or kick. That's one subtle translation of it. The other subtle translation, yes? Stomp or stomp? Stomp, I'll like stomp. stomping, like, like marching. It's almost like marching or stomping. That's really what Tay means. And there's this indirect association with foot. It does seem to give a whole new intensity mm -hmm. to it. Exactly. Then there's this other translation of the same character that can mean like huge, colossal, vast, as in karate, meaning kara means vast, expansive, colossal, huge, you know, endless. The te character can also be interpreted in that sense. So when you really look at the term te guan, and in Korean there's no k. You guys know that, right? Yes, it, it's with a G sound. Guan. It's Taekwondo. Not Taekwondo with a K. It's Taekwondo with a G. Okay? Uh, just like Hapki Bak or Hapki. Most people say Hapki with a, with a P. Hap, there's no P in the Korean language. Right? And there's no K. So it's hab, like H-A-B. It's almost like saying habgi with a G. Habgi. Habgido. Really is what it should be. But common language, it became parochial. And then we say habkido or taekwondo. That's parochial. But it's not accurate. Okay? So, taekwondo. Uh, Meaning, and there's no T in the Korean language either. It's a D-A-E when pronounced properly. It's like a T-D sound saying Daekwondo. But that's just to bring accuracy to it. Uh, but Daekwon could also mean the same as Karate, meaning vast hands. That's what the term Karate means. Essentially, you can have the same reference to Daekwondo, right? Mm -hmm. So that gives you a whole different meaning to what this is. The do part of it doesn't really belong in Korean cultural expressions. That's a Japanese adaptation from the 45 years or so that Japan occupied Korea, all right? And Koreans were Japanese subjects. Even some of the older folks had to have Japanese names, okay? So the do part of it is a transplant. It was imported. The correct, uh, the correct reference would be sol, like S-O-O-L, right? Or ye, Y-A-E, which is why in my system of hapgi, there's no do. Mm. Okay. But, eh? It's hapgi muye. That's accurate from a Korean cultural national point of view. And a lot of people are really kind of you know, 
this Korean gentleman who I communicate with on Facebook, he's like, wow, he says, pretty cool. He says, thank you for doing that. Because he's one of those old school martial artists and he knows that the difference between Do and Ye is like, because Koreans are essentially Confucian in their ways, right? And, and, and Buddhist in their ways. And modern Buddhism is a combination of, of Buddhism and Confucianism. It's not, even in the lineage that I'm ordained in, it's, it, there is that, there's that combination, all right? But why even take a critical look at what we're doing? As uh, I get into uh, heated discussions on Facebook with certain people about my approach to what this is. If you notice, when I write about Taekwondo, it's not just Taekwondo, it's IKMF Taekwondo. So that distinguishes us from everybody else, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> right? So um, I'm not trying to change Taekwondo. A lot of people are accusing me of that. I'm not trying to change it. I'm not trying to have a new version of it. What I'm trying to do is bring it in an accuracy to what's already there. That's it. And to do that, you have to be critical in your thinking about it, right? So uh, research, reverse engineering, right? Critical thinking are the, are the keys to bringing accuracy to your practice. When you look at basic techniques like low block, or this punch, or this block, or any one of those techniques, these skills themselves are, they are historical history books. So I don't see how Taekwondo practitioners can do this and say it's Korean. <laughs> it's not. The very fact of the skills means that it came from Okinawa. You see what I'm saying? So there is this sticking your head in the sand kind of behavior. You know, they're doing these skills like this and, and that and, you know, all of those skills. And they say, oh, it came from the Parang in the Three Kingdom era in, South, in, in Korea. And it's like, really? So let's, let's dispense with the nationalism and bring accuracy to the history because if we don't know where we came from, it's hard to know where we're going and it's hard to locate yourself in the here and now. That's what I'm saying. So Taekwondo has become, and I'm gonna say this, expecting criticism, but Taekwondo has become aberrant. <clears throat> it's gone too far afield to what it should be. So if you have basic skills, line drills, you, we all do them. And then you have Humze, which doesn't resemble the line drills. <laughs> and then you have sparring, which doesn't resemble any of those previous things. And then you have self-defense. That's an oxymoron. That's a martial art oxymoron. Because the very fact of the art is self-defense. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so you have to have a separate category of training because the assumption is those people who are involved in the sparring or sport aspect of it and then the basics of the art, they're just, oh, they don't match. There's no synergy or congruence among these aspects of training. So, uh, so you have to do something extra. So, Bringing accuracy to it, not changing it, means that there should be a building block process. If you do low block this way, then you should be able to use that to fight, to defend yourself, etc. And the information is in there, if you understand your original intent. So part of the reverse engineering or historical research about the art gives you insight into the intent of the skill. Not that the skill is wrong. It's not wrong. It's just I think the understanding of it is on an elementary school level. So you have six, seven, eight, ninth dons still thinking that 
The low block is against a front kick, which is ridiculous. Okay, yes? Do you think the same applies to Tung Soo Do and the other Kwan? All of them. All, everything. On the All of them. Because, good question though, there is a, if you look at the core skills of Taekwondo, mm -hmm. it's common to numerous systems. Mm -hmm. There's that common thread that pervades. Low block is low block, whether you're doing Taekwondo, Tang Sudo, Hong Sudo, whatever derivative Do that you, you're doing. It's all the same thing. You know, you take it to Japan, Shorokan, Shudokan, or any of the Wataru, any of the other uh, derivative styles approximating karate that exists in Japan. You take it to Okinawa, you get a whole different story. All right? You take it to Okinawa, and I remember being a young Marine demonstrating uh, Pian and Shodan, you know, to uh, uh, Master Oyata, and him standing there laughing his head off at me. Telling me that's not real karate. <laughs> and then you watch him do it, and it's a whole different timing, a whole different syntax and rhythm, you know. And, and he jokes about it all the time. He's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> he jokes about it all the time. But you watch him do these forms, and they're very fluid, they're very soft. The rhythm and timing is a little bit different. And you watch him apply it, it it's, it's a whole different ballgame. So you have to go back in time. Well, oh, there were other masters on the island too who I used to spend time training with, like Sekichi Odo, who's, who's the late Sekichi Odo, who was like an icon on the islands, um, the Okinawa Island. Then there is uh, Fusei Kisei, who I used to have an ongoing feud with, but we're cool, <laughs> cool with each other. Um, Hunan Soken, and all of these. Karate greats on the island, they, they would laugh at us American GIs. Because that's not real karate, they don't even bother doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because karate, karate kenpo jutsu it is more like, like a grappling system to them. It's more grappling. If you really watch these guys work, it's, it's, it's grappling. Every sense of the word, just like Chen Tai Chi Chuan, 80% of Chen is what? It's grappling. it's grappling. Can you imagine, you know, an art like Tai Chi, not Tai Chi, but Tai Chi Chuan, grind polarity boxing, right? You know, you look at the opening move of the form, you know, it starts out, you know, like this, and there's this opening move of the form, right? Right, right? And can, how, how can you construct um, uh, and say that that's grappling? Well, it is. Once you understand the application of it, you realize, wow, this is a grappling system. And it is. It's the same as like, like karate. It's a grappling system, mostly. And there's this interesting balance between grappling and tute and atemi, which is striking the pressure points. The position of your arm speaks to where the strike should be going, to a vital point. That's what Hoshin Sul means. Hoshin Sul is not a separate system. It's a conceptual framework within the system. Right? So here we go. So that's what we're going to do a little bit of today, is to look at some of the basic uh, skills. And, and some of you have seen some of my applications of these, but we're going to go even further than that with some of these basic skills. And we're going to, we're going to construct, we, we're going to restrict it to the Pumse, right? The Tego series and the Black Belt Pumse from Koryo, um, Gungan, Tibet, Pyongyang, these forms, right? And you will find out that that the timing of skills, like, you know, if I were to do a low block, and here it's coming from, from over here, why would I, if my opponent is standing over here, why the heck are you facing that way? 
Well, they say you're being attacked from the left. Well, there are historical references as to why you're being attacked from the left. And it has to do with the fact that Pan, which is where a lot of these things came from, <laughs> and mind you, I want to say too before I move on, that what we know is Taekwondo and those basic skills that make up uh, the Pumse, which is uh, an interesting thing. But Pumse, and I wrote this on Facebook the other day and on YouTube, which came first? Pumse or the actual two man engagement? Which came first? We think we have to say the two man engagement. Exactly. The two man engagement is only a result of, of uh, the Pumse is only a result of the two man engagement. Mm -hmm. So that you codify those skills in, in, in a geometric pattern which is what the term Pumse means, to preserve that particular conceptual approach. That's really what it is. So it's a fluid thing, yeah? It's fluid. And then there is variation and application and based on changing circumstances. So it's fluid, okay? But the timing is, is different. So here I have a guy standing to my left He's going to attack me, why don't I just do this? <laughs> just face it, right? But it doesn't mean that you actually step to the left. It actually means that if a guy is standing in front of me and he launches a punch at me, that I move to the left. That's really what that means. Or to the right. That's what that means, right? But why do this? All right, so we have low block punch, right? But then you have all of this taking place to get to here. Why don't I just do this? <laughs> I mean, from a critical thinking, fighting point of view, that makes sense to me, right? Sure. Well, there's a reason why it's done that way. There's a reason why. So, since both of us are injured, I'll watch your foot. And you can watch my wrist. <laughs> we're, both, we're both injured today. <laughs> Alright? So we'll just take it slow, okay? So if I'm, if, if, if I'm standing here, alright, and, and he punches, right? That's what this is. Right? That's what this is. So the first priority here is, is punch, is movement. Okay, that's the first priority. Second priority is this. Okay, that's the second priority. Third is to grapple with it. And that's what this is. Okay, that's what happens there. So that low block, you can do that with one hand, punch. That's what this is, punch. And it's not a block. You see what it does? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, <clears throat> and he literally runs into your fist. And that's, the, that's this part of it. So the timing, you see, is one, <clears throat> two, right? No, it should be, really, it should be, that's a different timing. And really, that's what this is. It's like, boom, boom. Right? I mean, pulling him into this, right? Or you can look at it this way. Go this way. Put your hand up like this, fighting stance. Right, we're here, right? Here, here's what's happening. And then, boom. That's the first two moves in the form. Okay? That's the first two moves. Yes. And that's how you get to be going that way. Exactly. Okay. So here, here's what happens. I go, well, I go this way. You know? So we're bridging hands. And he's going to punch. And I go, there's the low block. Right? What, moves come, what move come after this? Punch. The punch is at a vital point just below the occipital ridge. Boom! He's dead. Martial arts is dangerous, okay? 
So here I am, push, pull, right? And I step and go, wham, he's done. But in case he didn't get enough, okay, here's the deal. Here's what happens, but it's missing here. So I punch. I'm going to do this in my blind spot, 180 degree turn. There's a reason for that. What do you think the reason is? Maybe take, take the arm and wrist and then reverse it. No, it's not reversing. Because given the position I'm in. Nick? Is it a, 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 change of, a change of direction in case it's got the counter? Yeah, but why? Because I'm potentially running into a fist. Okay. Because I'm like here, right? And I'm going this way. You're taking him as a block. You're taking him as a block. Yeah. with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. So we're here, right? Sorry. I'm sorry. And I go, boom! And here I am, right? The taking him with me is this. Okay. That's what that is. That makes sense, right? Because here he is. And forward. And I'm grabbing his, his head, and I'm, t yeah, I'm, th yeah, I'm this way, right? I'm grabbing his head, it's a head twist, and I'm doing this. So depending on velocity, he could, he's dead after that potentially. He's dead after that punch behind his head. It doesn't necessarily have to be the traditional <coughs> two attackers, it's one person you finish. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's not necessarily that. Because if it's two, two attackers, and I'm here, why don't I just do this? Mm -hmm. Right? So the, as much as I really don't like the way this Pumse is constructed, I think the synergy between the transitional moves is not clearly understood, even by some of the people who created these forms. But I'm bringing meaning to it, OK? So you do here, and then it's boom, and then that's the next move. Then the next move is this, right? Then the next move is this. Now, that right there, where you're blocking inwards, that's this, right? Now, let me say something about punching. We punch like this, right? During the time I was uh, on Okinawa for the year and a half I was there, this is what they taught me to do. So you're forcing that knuckle forward? No. If you, if you hold down the index finger, mm -hmm. right? Are you striking with? No, you're not striking with anything. You're striking with your fist. This, as opposed to this, is a different feeling. So when you hit something, it's not, you see how I, you see how I, my, Fist is flat. During the time I was in Okinawa, it was this. <clears throat> you understand? It's like you hold down the index finger, but you punch him with your fist. Okay? There's a reason for that. Because if you watch the old Okinawan masters punch, they never punched along the center line. <clears throat> they crossed the center line with a punch. So if he punches at me, this is what it was. That's what this is. And you see them move like this, right? Mm -hmm. So the, if you look at what's happening here, I'm crossing the center line and boom, and hitting him. Rather than punching along the center line. You're crossing it. I just thought I'd mention that as an aside. That's what research does. But we're at this block, right? This block, the timing of it, the way we do it, is this. Again, if you really look at this, my palm is facing up, right? If you really feel what's going on here, it puts a tremendous amount of strain on your rotator cuff group. Right. Mm -hmm. 
you know, my academic training is in biomechanics and medicine, so there you go. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's really what that is. You can feel the tension here. Now, just allow that to unwind. Yeah, just allow it, not fully, but if you're here, just relax the fist. And this is what you get. When you punch, again, doing this, the two bones in the hand, the ulna and the radius, crosses. That makes it a very unstable structure. But by releasing that cross mm -hmm. and flattening the two bones so that they're not crossing each other like this, provides a much stronger structure. So it's just stuff to think about. You know, I'm just giving you guys a parallel view of what this thing was like. Okay? So is that is that why you have more of a tendency if you're punching straight on for your wrist to bend? Yes. Versus yeah. versus when you do it this way. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like really it's that. Right. But you do like this and your your elbow is locked out. The point of your elbow is pointing that way. Not good. You're not engaging your right group of muscles. See, when I drop my elbow slightly and allow my arm to align this way, I'm engaging the right group of muscles. I mean, you can do this. Stick your arm out in front of you. Not just drop your elbow slightly on it. Right. You feel the muscles, different muscles engage, right? Which is basically your pecs, your latissimus dorsi, your biceps, your triceps, your brachioradialis muscles. Those are the key prime, those are the prime movers in this, in this skill. Why you want to take that away by doing this? Right? And you see that. So really the punch should be like right here. Boom! Right there. But in terms of this uh, movement, if I'm going to do this, it's not, it's not like I'm smashing perpendicular to to him, that's not what this is happening. It's more like I'm pushing. It's this way, not this way. You understand? It's this. That's a whole different thing. And it's a strike. It's not a block. So if you notice, when I write about this stuff, I put block, immobilization, percussion, you know, I, I slash this, you know, I deliberately do that because each of these techniques are transformational. And the reason why you feel crunches with this is because as I move in, is this is what happens. Even if you take it from here, punch, you see what happens? That's the idea behind it. Okay. See what I mean? Okay? So here, like that. Now, he punches with that hand, and then here. It's a strike. So it's like, boom! It's a strike. That's just giving you another view of it, right? This block. is really a strike. It's this. Okay, that's what that is. Right? But this movement here is this. I mean, this is a misinterpretation. So it's, this is what, what most people do. However, it's, if that's what that is. And it's like this, along that line. So, so I'm striking, and here's what happens. You see, because if he, if he tries to beat me to this, he won't be able to. Okay. But if he punches, and I go like this, yeah, that's, this is what you got going on. So the movement of your feet, is that. That's really what that is. Okay? That's really what that is. So that's, then there is high block, 
right? And everybody does this. And they do it at the wrist. And you punch. If you block somebody like this, all he has to do is drop his elbow into your chest. And you're done. That's not what it is. If you're going to use this block, that's really where it should be. Okay? That's what it should be. It should, oh, oh. This hurts. Right? You can, guys can stand if you want to. So it's up. I gotta, get, I gotta get, get cool, I'm too hot. You're getting hot? Yeah. I okay. Gotta, I gotta cool down. I thought he had um, <coughs> turned the air on in here. That's what he had said. Yeah, he did turn it on. Yeah. Yeah, go cool off. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh. All right. So those are just some of the highlights of, uh, you know, and then there are other blocks, but we're going to, you know, I don't want you guys to move around too much. It's really unbearably hot in here. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm, I'm going to fit that in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you can stop. Did you stop the camera? Yeah, go ahead and stop. Yeah, so. What's that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the temperature farm with me is just the air is water. There's water. All right, so how do you stop your camera? <laughs> you did. How do you know I did? That's it. Is it still running? Yeah, it is. Right here.